here from Remo Nutrients R&D. And today we're gonna to be showing you how to create an easy do-it-yourself hydroponic system for around $100. Now there are six different varieties of systems available on the market today, including ebb and flow systems, aquaponics, and drip irrigation, but today we're going to be focusing on deep water culture. I chose this style because frankly it's the easiest one to set up, involves the least amount of components, and is the cheapest one to get started. Now there are kits that you can buy online that allow you to convert these five gallon pails into DWC modules by putting a one gallon uh, net pot on the top. Now the problem that I have with this is if you put one gallon in a five gallon bucket, you're only left with four gallons of space for your roots to expand and your plants to get bigger. Also, if you want to increase the number of modules in your system by connecting them together, you run the risk of damaging your whole garden if something goes wrong with your one reservoir. Instead, we're going to be using this 27 gallon tote to make a two pot grow module uh, that'll give us at least 12 and a half gallons per plant, which almost triples the amount of uh, capacity for uh, our roots to expand into this grow pot. Also, because of the compact shape of this, you can fit more than one of these in your modest size grow area and it allows you to isolate your reservoir so if something goes wrong with one of them, you don't lose your whole garden. Now, I should mention that this is only for a small home garden. If you're running more than 100 square feet of grow space, you might want to look into a commercially available unit like the undercurrent system from Current Culture. It's going to cost you a little bit more, but they have dozens of different configurations that will fit any type of growing room. I've put a link in our video description if you want to find out some more information. Alright, let's get started on our build. So these are the accessories you're going to need in order to create your uh, do-it-yourself uh, deep water culture system. We have our air pump. We have the air line that attaches to the air pump. We have our air stone, which diffuses the air coming out of the air line into small bubbles. And then I've got a small fountain pump here. Now, the reason I add the fountain pump in, there are some systems that don't actually have this and they're uh, off the shelf products. Um, I just use it just simply because if you add uh, your nutrient solution to the water, there's a tendency for it to sink to the bottom just because you're dealing with heavier elements. I add this there, just uh, sits at the bottom, sucks in the uh, solution and then spits it back out. So make sure that everything is mixed evenly, especially when your uh, baskets are sitting on top and uh, your nutrient solution is on the bottom. So it's not gonna help anything. And then of course, as I said before, I've got my 27 gallon tote and then two gallon uh, net pots. So the cost on these is fairly minimal. This is about, uh, I'd say $15 for the pump, about $5 worth of tubing, so that's $20. About $5 for the air stone, so we're looking at 25. And then it was about $30 for the, uh, the pump. So that's about 55. Each of these pots went for about five bucks, so we're at $65. The tote, which I picked up on special, was about $15, so we're looking at 80. And then a bag of grow stone, which uh, went for about $30 in total, so we're looking at about $100, $110 for the whole package, and you can start your deep water culture system. And we'll get things started right away. So the best way to gauge how big you're going to be cutting your holes is to put two five gallon buckets on top of your surface and just simply trace around with a sharpie. Now these uh, baskets are meant to fit on top of these buckets so I know that uh, these are probably going to be too wide. Um, I don't want the baskets falling into the, uh, into the, uh, the bin and so I'm going to use the bottom diameter instead and uh, I'm going to trace around with a sharpie and, uh, and start from there. Now if they need to be a little bit bigger that's, that, that's okay. Uh, we can always uh, increase the size but you don't, we want to make sure that you're not cutting uh, too much uh, to start with uh, just so um, uh, you get a perfect fit in the end. So I've traced my outline on the uh, surface here and I'm going to be cutting it using this router tool. I've got a blade on top of here that's used for uh, vertical uh, cutting and I'm just going to trace around these holes. Uh, hopefully uh, I've uh, gauged the size correctly and if not I'm just going to do some fine tuning uh, with this, uh, this bit and I should be able to get a nice fit. Okay, we've cut out our holes in our, uh, our surface and uh, we use the router tool now. Just a quick tip, if you're going to cut these out, you want to go as slow as possible. If you go fast, you're going to end up uh, ripping up this plastic and you'll get a really uneven circle. So I'm just going to throw the baskets in here and see uh, if everything works out. 
Perfect. Look at that. So our next step is to uh, punch in a access hole for the airline and the pump cord. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch in a one inch hole right in the corner here uh, so it doesn't intrude on any of the, uh, the surface. And uh, we'll just put that right in there. Okie doke. Now I found that one inch is a little bit of a tight squeeze for the cord because it is a grounded cord, but if you give it a little bit of love, uh, you can squeeze it in there no problem. And you want to make sure that it's as small as possible because you don't want a lot of stuff getting access to your, uh, uh, your uh, mix or your grow formula. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is to put in your fountain pump. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. It's a mag drive. Uh, it doesn't pump a lot, but it's enough to mix up your nutrient solution. Now you're going to want to put your pump in first because the hole is only one inch and if you're dealing with a grounded cord, there's not a lot of room to get in there. So you're going to have to put a little bit of uh, oomph into it and, uh, and force it down in there in order to get your cord through. But once it's through, uh, you'll never have to worry about it again. So the next step is to add your air stone to your airline. Now it's just got a barb on the end that you just force into the airline. Place it in the center of the grow uh, pod. And then you want to feed your airline through your access hole and into the end of your air pump. And that's it. The only thing left are your grow baskets. So the hydroponic grow medium that we're going to be using for our system is Growstone. Uh, they come in these large bags, about $35 at your hydroponic store. And I prefer Growstone or Perlite as my uh, grow medium of choice. Uh, the clay stones, uh, those clay balls that uh, you've seen in the past, uh, we found that they've uh, had a pretty high acidity to them and you can wash them uh, multiple times and they still retain their acidity. So these things are fairly neutral and uh, the only difference between these things and Perlite are essentially uh, perlite's going to give you a little bit more of a, uh, a fine uh, root mass whereas this gives you a little bit more of a bulky root mass just because there's larger uh, spaces between each of the particles. Uh, either way uh, you're going to want to wash all of your grow medium before you use it. Uh, these things are manufactured by the ton and so uh, there's going to be some dust and maybe some impurities that are added along with the mix and so just make sure you put them in your basket and then rinse them thoroughly so that you get all that dust out. You don't want it accumulating and um, that's an easy way to burn out your, uh, uh, your water pump. Uh, so uh, make sure that you wash them out in the baskets. Uh, uh, so pour them in there, throw them under a sink, and get all that dust off there before you throw your plants in. So we finished washing off our uh, grow stone, and uh, if you've done everything correctly, this is what your unit should look like. So you've got your two pumps, your air pump, and your uh, fountain pump, your two grow pods, and then your air stone and your pump are inside the unit. Now, this particular tote is 27 gallons in capacity. That's full uh, all the way to the top. And these two baskets, they're about one gallon each. So you have to factor in that uh, you're gonna wanna put as much water as you can in there, but you don't want it to overflow. So if they're one gallon each, and it's 27 gallons in total, you're gonna put 25 gallons of, uh, of water into your reservoir. And it's recommended to use either uh, reverse osmosis water or uh, distilled water if you can. You want to get rid of some of those microbes because you don't want any algae growing in your, uh, your water reservoir. And that is the $100 deep water culture hydroponic system in a nutshell, guys. So I'll just show you one of our research tents here in our R&D lab. Uh, we have uh, two of these units currently in our 6x6 grow tent. And uh, this one has two like the one we uh, created in the video. And this one has six uh, that we've used for some smaller plants. We've got some kale growing in there right now. But uh, as you can see by the size, in a 6x6 tent, you can put five of these in there, which would give you 10 plants, or you can get 30 of these smaller ones. So a lot of area to grow, and uh, you can run a hydroponic system that's nice and snug and compact. Compact. Now we got one of these ones as well. This is the UC Solo 10 uh, from Current Culture. It's a standalone deep water culture system that uh, we're going to be using for a larger plant, but we haven't put anything in there to uh, 
uh, do any research on. But as you can see, it's very space efficient and uh, you can get a lot of plants in there if you, uh, if you get a couple of these systems in there. Now if you need some more information on how to grow in a DWC unit, there are grow forums all over the internet that should be able to help you get started. I've added some links to the video description that'll help you source the components to this particular system and get you started. If you need some more information on our product line, check us out at www.ramonutrients.com. This has been Raymo Nutrients R&D. Thanks for watching.